What is up guys, welcome back to the Wildcast. hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're gonna be doing another update to the Helena Hutchins shooting that happened on October 21st of Alec Baldwin's latest movie, Rust. And uh, in this video, we're gonna be looking at the lawyer for Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, who was the armorer that was responsible for gun safety uh, on the set. Um, and he's gonna be making some excuses, maybe valid, maybe not valid. We'll be judging that as we go through it. Uh, he's gonna be explaining why his client is not responsible for the shooting that happened. Now, last week I covered uh, in detail the statement that was put out by uh, these lawyers, and they basically said that um, their client was not responsible. She did all the things that she could. She was very busy. The uh, the uh, studio gave her too many jobs. They were making all kinds of excuses. I went through some of them and I fairly judged them. Some of those excuses might be valid. Some of them may be not. And if you want to see those videos, my prior videos on this case, they're going to be in the uh, true crime playlist that I have. I'm going to link that in the top right hand corner. But now let's get to the uh, video at hand here. So this guy went on ABC News. Uh, we're going to be going through the interview. I'm going to be making some comments about what he said. All right, so let's get started here. Joining us now is Jason Bowles, the attorney for Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, the armorer for the production. Mr. Bowles, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And, and I want to start with the chain of command on the gun that was used in the fatal shooting. But when the crew broke for lunch, your client told investigators that the guns were locked away, but ammunition was left unsecured on a cart. When production resumed, who handled the gun and who ultimately gave it to Baldwin? Uh, thank you and good morning. Thank you for having me on. Um, at, at that point at 11 a.m. that morning, the gun was loaded, was loaded with dummy rounds. Those are inert rounds incapable of, of firing on the cart. Uh, when Hannah came back from lunch, uh, approximately 10 minutes after that, 12 something, um, she then showed that, that firearm to Mr. Halls, the assistant director. She spun the cylinder, uh, showed him each of the rounds in that, that firearm, and then she gave the firearm to Mr. Halls. Uh, at that point, he had the, the gun. He went into the church. Uh, he said he was going to hold it. Um, at that point, Hannah, there was no scene going on. There was no rehearsal. There was tech prep with the cameras. They were trying to set up, figure out where they're going to be. So with nothing going on, Hannah left the church to resume her duties and her prop uh, job. So the details that he just explained, they are accurate for the most part. Hannah wasn't there when the shooting happened. She did take a break because they weren't actually doing any kind of, uh, they weren't supposed to do anything with the guns. They were they were setting up camera angles. That's why the uh, director, Joel Souza was there and uh, Hutchins was there and she was going over camera angles with, um, what's his name, Alec Baldwin when the shooting happened. So that what he, what he just described is accurate. Now, the only question I would have is that he said, Hannah showed and examined the rounds, the dummy rounds that were put into the gun. Now, my question would be, as somebody who's an amateur when it comes to guns, I don't know anything about guns. I don't care about guns. Can you tell the difference between a dummy round and a real bullet, right? Live ammunition, uh, from what I understand, is heavier. And you can you can tell when you compare, when you hold uh, rounds in your hands, from what I've seen explained by experts, the dummy rounds are lighter, okay? That's what I've heard. I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not a gun enthusiast. I don't care about guns, don't like guns, not a fan. The most relevant legal question here when it comes to any kind of legal liability is, should Hannah Reed have been able to tell the difference between a dummy round and a live round? Do they weigh the same? Do they look the same? These are the obvious questions that people should be asking. And th these are the questions that are going to be relevant if she's going to be held responsible. Because if a reasonable gun expert says that Hannah Gutierrez should have been able to tell the difference between dummy rounds and live rounds, then she becomes responsible for loading the gun because she handed it to the uh, assistant director, Dave uh, Dave Halls, and then Halls handed it over to Alec Baldwin and he shot. The, he is the one who accidentally fired the gun. So this all goes back to who was responsible for gun safety and that person was Hannah Gutierrez. That's why her lawyer is coming on national television and talking about these things because she's the one that's going to be held directly responsible for gun safety because that's her job on the set. But despite the fact that she was responsible for gun safety, other um, extenuating circumstances may take uh, liability, legal liability away from Hannah Gutierrez if other people made mistakes that she could not foresee. OK, so with that being said, let's keep on going here. Are you trying to say that she rechecked the gun before it was given to, to Alec Baldwin? 
She, she did uh, spin the cylinder. She showed Mr. Halls each of the rounds. There were six uh, dummy rounds that she um, had loaded into that firearm that she believed. So he just admitted that she checked the rounds. So the rounds that were put into the gun were checked by Hannah Gutierrez before the shooting. That makes her reasonably responsible as a gun expert for the bullets. So again, it comes back to can a reasonable gun expert tell the difference between dummy rounds and live rounds? Um, she did spin it. She did check it. She did uh, by spinning it, by showing it to Mr. Halls, gave it to Mr. Halls. We then know that he had the firearm in the church and that firearm then ended up with Mr. Baldwin. Uh, it was not given to Mr. Baldwin by Hannah. Uh, I believe they went to him through Mr. Halls. And that was the chain of custody of that weapon. And, and does Hannah know how a live bullet got into that weapon? No, and I appreciate you asking that. That's going to be the biggest question in this case, and that's something we're very on, and we're looking at. Uh, we're we're going to work closely with law enforcement, do anything we can to cooperate. The FBI is running uh, forensic testing, evidence, uh, DNA, and fingerprint. That's going to be critical uh, in terms of who put that live round on the scene. Multiple live rounds, we understand, were recovered, and why? Because the other interesting fact about this, there was a box of labeled dummy rounds that Hannah had been pulling from. She knew were dummy rounds. Somebody put that live round or live rounds in that box. When you do that, you, you can only have bad intentions because you're going to confuse the rounds if you're the armorer. And they appear very similarly. The, the dummy rounds look like a regular live round. Okay, so what, the, what he just floated was that some other person, a, a, a mysterious person we don't know yet, somehow sabotaged the bullets. That's what they said there. So let's go over everything he said. And this might actually be the extenuating circumstances I discussed before. So if Hannah Reed actually had a box uh, labeled dummy rounds and she had a reasonable expectation that the rounds in that box were all dummy rounds and therefore there was no reason for her to double check them, they can make the argument that she had no way that it wasn't even negligence because she expected all those rounds to be dummy rounds. So that's why she loaded them into the gun and gave the gun to Dave Halls. Right. So that is an argument that the jury might buy if they can prove in some other way that there might have been some kind of other sabotage, for example, fingerprints of a person that they can't identify yet. Right. That would mean that somebody fussed with the dummy rounds and put a live round there just to cause some kind of chaos. Right. Now, we don't know what the intentions of the person who did this was or if this person even exists. But if the person if you can create reasonable doubt that there's some other mysterious person who messed with the guns, uh, messed with the bullets so that that something like this would happen, then the responsibility would would move away in the eyes of the jury, away from Hannah Gutierrez, because then there are other forces that were messing with what's going on in the set. Now, again, this is the story they're telling. There's no forensic evidence to support this. As far as we stand right here, um, Hannah Gutierrez seems to be the person who's most responsible. The job of the lawyers for Hannah Gutierrez is to uh, you know, hint at uh, at reasonable doubt. So you have to take all of that under consideration. The, the job of her lawyer here is to make sure that her their client is found innocent if charges are brought. So they're setting up their defense right now by blaming blaming a third party, a mysterious third party that we don't know about, some person who fussed with the guns. Okay, that's the narrative that they're painting right now. We don't know if it's true or not, but I'm just an, I'm just doing uh, analysis, legal analysis on what it would mean if that's actually true. So, so you're saying that it, it could have been purposely done? I, I'm, we're, we are looking at that possibility. We're, we're afraid that could have been what happened here, that somebody intended to sabotage this set with a live round intentionally placed in a box of dummies. Otherwise, you wouldn't, you, first of all, you wouldn't bring a live round on the set. But second of all, why do you place that in the box labeled dummies that the armor is going to be pulling from? Everybody knows they're going to be getting them from there. Why would you do that other than to try to cause some incident? So he just he just said something like a given, like everybody knows that Hannah Gutierrez uh, was pulling from that dummy round box. So is that common knowledge? So we have to ask people on set and establish that. So he said it like it was a given. Oh, everybody knew that Hannah was going to pull from this dummy box. Is that true? So that's another thing legally that would be relevant so we have to get testimony to prove that so he just said it like it's a given but we have to verify that in the box labeled dummies that the armor is going to be pulling from everybody knows they're going to be getting them from there
there. Why would you do that? other than to try to cause some incident on this set. Now, we're not saying anybody had any intent there was going to be a, a, a tragedy, a homicide, but they wanted to do something to cause a safety incident on set. But, that, but, that's what we believe happened. And that's, but that's a very, very serious allegation. Um, do you have any evidence to support that? Good question. Well, the, the biggest evidence we have is that there is a box of dummies and there's live rounds within that box. Uh, we know Hannah did not put the live rounds uh, in that box. We know the live rounds shouldn't have been in that box, but they were. So th there can be very, very few explanations for why live rounds end up in a box of dummy prop ammunition on a movie set. Uh, and, and one of them is that somebody wants that to go into a firearm, and they wants that to be an incident on the set. There's no other reason to mix a live round with the dummies. So that's one possibility that he's floating to make his client look good. But the other uh, other possibility is that Hannah Gutierrez, being the gun nut that she is, brought that live ammunition herself. OK, and accidentally put that in the wrong box. Now, he's never going to say that because he doesn't want you to consider any possibility that would uh, bring legal liability down on Hannah Gutierrez. But I'm a neutral observer and I'm trying to give you guys all possible uh, explanations as to what might have happened. So one thing you want to remember when you're reading legal documents or listening to lawyers is that they're trying to push their side. And it's my job as a legal analyst to point out for you guys that there are other frames which you can build around this event. Okay, he's trying to build one frame to make his client look good, but there are other frames from which you can view the events that happened on that set. And you said that Hannah handed the AD the gun and she left the church. So she was the gun was in the church without Hannah. It was in the church without Hannah, that is correct. And she didn't believe there was anything happening at that point. There was no rehearsal. Uh, there was no scene going on. It was a tech prep where the cameras were setting up positioning. Uh, so there was not supposed to be happening. Had they called her in, and they usually they do, they call Hannah in and they say, we're about to do a scene involving a firearm. She'll go in, she'll re-instruct Mr. Baldwin on the safety uh, features, what he's doing in this shot. She'll go through the gun again, she'll inspect it again, and that's how it worked on this set. Well, she wasn't called back because there wasn't a, a scene, there wasn't a shot. Okay, so again, what he said there, that is more extenuating circumstances, if true. So that takes even more legal liability away, away from Hannah Reed, if that's actually true. If they were just doing, you know, camera angles and there was no expectation a gun was going to be used, then Hannah would not have to be, have been there, okay? But again, for me, it all goes back to the beginning where she's the one who's supposed to check the guns anyways. But if people used a gun without the fair expectation that Hannah was supposed to check them, then that takes liability away from Hannah and puts it back on the person who was there. The person who was there was um, the AD, the assistant director, uh, Dave Halls. If what he just said is true, then the liability would fall, fall more on Dave Halls' head because he was actually there rather than Hannah Gutierrez. So as I always say, I'm 100% fair. And if there's evidence that shows that Hannah Gutierrez was not legally liable, then I have no problem admitting that. And if what he just said is true then that helps hannah's case that she's not the one who's responsible okay so i want to i want to keep it 100 all the time as always so let's keep on going well you know investigators they say they found 500 rounds of ammunition on set including blanks as you said dummy rounds and live rounds why were there live rounds on the set in the first place best question ever and that's the biggest question in, in the whole case. Uh, the blanks, as you know, Mike, they are uh, designed to, uh, they're crimped at the end. They don't resemble a live bullet. They fire off powder. They just are for sound and, and the look of the powder coming out. The dummy rounds resemble a live round. They've got a projectile tip. That's what their purpose is. When the camera looks at them in a revolver, it looks like a real round. There is no purpose for a live round in this set, zero. And Hannah made that cut. She, there was no reason for there to be live rounds. She didn't have live rounds. She didn't purchase any of this ammunition. This ammunition was purchased by other people, production. Uh, so whoever brought these live rounds on set was, was wrong. And I think they had a, a bad intention. Uh, that's what we believe. 
Okay, so that's another good point. So investigators can check to see if, if there's, I don't know if there's serial numbers on the bullets themselves. I know there are serial numbers on guns, but I don't know much about bullets, uh, the ammunition. So is there any way to confirm where the ammunition was brought, uh, bought? Because if they can verify who bought it, then that might help either uh, incriminate or exonerate Hannah Reed. If she didn't buy the ammunition or she didn't acquire it from anybody, then she's not the one who's going to be found guilty. So that again, that's more evidence if if brought to light, if proven, that could prove that Hannah Reed is innocent. Okay, so I'm giving you guys both sides here. So I'm giving you all the angles that I can possibly think of when I when when I cover this stuff. Well, there there are reports that crew members use prop guns from the set for live target practice. Does your client have any knowledge of that? She never saw anything like that. Uh, she doesn't believe that happened. Um, I don't know who's saying that, but uh, we don't believe that happened. She, could, she certainly never saw it. She was extremely safety conscious on this set. She did her best to train people. She was given limited training days. She did. She trained Alec Baldwin one-on-one -on, -one on a day. Uh, she did her best to ensure nobody ever pointed a firearm at anybody on the set. And that was one of her things. Don't point it at a human being. Um, but she did her best on that. She never saw anybody target practicing. Okay, so as I mentioned before, they're going for the responsible gun owner defense. The only problem is that there was another movie where she was irresponsible with another actress, 11 year old actress on a set with Nicolas Cage when they were make making a movie. I forgot the name of the movie, but you guys can you guys can look it up if you want. But she was res irresponsible there as well, where they where uh, she gave a, a 11 year old girl a gun uh, without checking it. That was verified by people who worked on that set. So she has a she has somewhat of a short record, but given that short record, she has previous incidents of where she was irresponsible when it comes to firearms. So he's trying to paint her as a responsible gun owner, gun owner, which is what they always do when somebody messes up. So again, these are all legal defenses that the that the that one of the attorneys on her side are putting up. So we have to analyze them from a neutral perspective, from a fair perspective. They're going to try to tilt the evidence to to help their client. That's the job of the defense attorney, which is what he is. So I'm trying to give you guys all the angles here, which is why I've done on this in this video when I covered this. OK, so again, this is what they always go to, which is the defense that she's a responsible gun owner. The evidence suggests that she is not. But nevertheless, we have to take the evidence as a whole. Just because she's an irresponsible gun owner in the past doesn't mean that she's responsible for this shooting. OK, so again, I'm always fair. I'm willing to give Hannah Reed all the benefits of the doubt uh, to make sure that she gets a fair hearing. OK, so let's finish this off. Who, who else on set would have access to the guns and, and why? There uh, were three people that had access to those guns in the prop truck, and that was Hannah, uh, Sarah, who was the prop master, and uh, another assistant. Uh, they had the code to the safe. The firearm would be locked in the safe. Now, the ammunition was not locked up. The ammunition was out because it was dummy rounds, everybody believed, and blanks, None, neither of which uh, was locked up or secured. So that box of dummy rounds, it was capable of being tampered with, and, and we believe that's what occurred. And in your statement, you said Hannah was hired for two jobs, which made it hard for her to focus on her armor or duties. And, and since she had only worked on one feature film before this one, was she too experienced to handle the work? Inexperienced to handle uh, I, the work? I would I'm say sorry. no. Yes, sir. No, no, I, I would say no. And, and the reason is uh, her father, a longtime person in this industry, Thel Reed, uh, and very well respected. He, he taught her literally from the age of 10, taking her on sets, uh, teaching her about firearm safety. She is actually very experienced. I, we talked to her at length yesterday. She knows firearms. She knows safety. She knows the principles. She knows how to This is not about her being inexperienced. It's about a production set where they didn't give the resources. They didn't have a, she wasn't a full-time armorer. They didn't pay her for that. They didn't have her on that. And it's the way they wanted to allocate resources and the emphasis on, on profitability, frankly, over safety. That, that's really what the case is. Mr. Bowles, we appreciate your time this morning. All right, oh. so you guys see the defense that they're going for here. They're trying to blame it on the studio and other people on the set and take blame away from Hannah Reed. Um, there might be some justification for that, but as of right now, um, there's no evidence that there was a third party, uh, you know, messing with the bullets. That it is their claim that there's some mysterious party who fussed with the ammunition and uh, put in uh, live ammunition in in the place of dummies. Um, and again, it comes down to the question: Is there a reasonable expectation? 
expectation that a gun expert, which they claim Hannah, Hannah Gutierrez to be, is there a reasonable expectation that a gun expert like Hannah Gutierrez can tell the difference between dummy rounds and live rounds? So, so somebody tell me in the comment section who knows about guns, if that's actually true, can you really tell? Is there is there an obvious way to tell when you're examining bullets to tell the difference between dummies and live ammunition? Because that's going to be relevant to how you evaluate her guilt or innocence. Because if when she was lo loading the gun, if she had a reasonable expectation to know the difference between those two things, then she could be held liable. But if if dummy rounds and live rounds look the same and feel the same and weigh the same, then you can say, hey, how was she supposed to know? And the re person who's really responsible is the person who brought the live rounds to the set in the first place. And that would be a good argument. I would admit that. OK, but that has not been proven out yet. So many questions need to be answered, have yet to be answered. And I'm sure the DA's office is looking into who they're going to be prosecuting or if they're going to be prosecuting anybody for the death of Helena Hutchins. But we just don't have a clear picture yet. OK, but I'm glad to see the uh, the Hannah Gutierrez lawyers coming out and actually talking to the press. I, I appreciate that. I don't believe everything they say, but nevertheless, I appreciate that they're making uh, a statement about uh, their client's potential culpability or innocence. Right. So as always, I'll be following this case further and giving you guys updates as we get them. But for now, that's all I got to say. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for my future videos. And uh, if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon and also on channel memberships by clicking the blue join button down below. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. As always, peace. Inhabitants of Pinch Trees. This is Judge Dredd. In case you people have forgotten. Mama is not the law. I am the law. Mama is a common criminal. Guilty of murder. And as of now, under sentence of death, any who obstruct me in carrying out my duty will be treated as an accessory to her crimes. You have been warned. And as for you, Mama, judgment time.